Hey guys, what's up? This is Lee from Complexity, and you're watching the Esports Historian Thorns YouTube channel. The opening stage of the PGL Copenhagen Major, the first ever CS2 Major, has been completed. It was finished today, and we had the final teams going through on the 2-2 game. Obviously, there was a lot of wild results, a lot of upsets. I'm sure some people were furiously tweeting at me. I imagine people felt imperial, royal almost, with the pain that the Brazilian teams were causing the EU squads. And obviously we had this whole debate of the RMRs and which region's better. And I had my response to what happened. But it was just a major. It was the usual ups and downs. You get the thrills of the underdogs doing it. Your big names fail and don't quite make it and have to bite the bullet and go home and think about it till the Shanghai major. But yeah, we're back into the next phase. The next phase is now rebranded. Whereas it used to be called Challenger Stage for the first one, which is now the opening stage. The next stage, to make it simpler, is called the Elimination Stage because it eliminates the final teams before the playoffs. Where Whereas this used to be called the legend stage, most famously the last few years within the majors. It is a bit tricky with this terminology, but we get it now. We understand it's going from top 24 to the final 16 to the final eight. Those are the best and easiest way to remember the three different phases. But obviously on the pickums, it's a different style now, and I'll get into some of it, but you had to essentially do it a little bit differently. You couldn't use the loophole for the 3-0, but spoiler, I did get my five picks, which is all you need to get the next round, and my coin is still alive. So obviously we'll start with the matchups from the last one. And as you can see, in my 3-0, which remember crucially, is not like the old system where you just put Joker teams in there. Because if a team goes 3-0 and you put them in the 3-1-3-2 section down here, you don't get anything. On the old system, those six counted also if the team went 3-0. So now, you have to actually pick the 3-0s. And you know what? Fair play. I did get both 3-0s. By the way, notice all those people in comments and on social media telling me, you've messed up. You picked Cloud9 and Heroic. They can't meet and be 3 0 because they're going to meet in the 2 0. That's because when you used the simulator, you just left it at default, where by default the higher seed wins. And so it gave you a Fugazi set of run runs. You have to go and on each one, check in the description box for the link, you have to pick who's going to win each game, then look at the outcome. And so I'd already done that, and I knew that actually I picked Cloud9 and Iran because my two most likely, and they did really good. So I got those two nailed. I obviously absolutely fucked up the 0-3. Like, for the 0-3, I picked Legacy and Pain. Like, spoiler, Pain was obviously, like, much better than expected, and Legacy was absolutely not a 0-3 team. So I, I messed up on those ones. I was actually banking on some of the other squads out there to do more work. Then in the 3-1-3-2, it even turns out, this is even scuffed, it turns out 3-1-3-2 isn't in any order. You can put any of the six and it's all fine. Because I thought it was, like, the top line is the 3-1 and the second line is the 3-2. If that was true, because obviously they've got this weird thing here, where, like, this line, go, that arrow goes up there, but then this one goes up here. So I thought, right, this slot has to lead to these three, this has to go that one. I'll tell you what, I'm glad that's not the case. If that was the case, that's why I tweeted, I thought this is a worse system. It's going to make it way harder. People aren't going to get the five and loads of people are going to feel like loads of people apparently have filled this one already. But because this is all combined, actually it doesn't matter because if you put the ticks on, I got the two three zeros. I didn't actually pick Ecstatic myself, so I didn't get that, but I got Eternal Fire. They went through 3-1. I actually had that. I had Mongols, I thought it was a 3-1 team, but they went 3-2 anyway. It doesn't matter. They got through. And I got Fury in the end. It looks in that one. I was a little bit worried about that one, but that one came through. So yeah, I've got my five. My five were Cloud9, Heroic, Eternal Fire, Mongols, and Furia. Now, the problem I had is, obviously, I did pick Apex. They actually were massively underperforming. Uh, Ents was obviously just kind of whack, right? They weren't particularly good. I did tell people on those shows I didn't have this as a team that would go far. And then saw... I mean, they actually were decent. I thought they were overrated and they wouldn't frag like they did in the last fit in the RMR, so I think I nailed that one. But the problem is they had to play Fury at the end. So there's a world where they could have gone through, but they didn't. Fury prevailed. Good for me, because it means I was definitely getting the coin on the last one anyway, because all you need, as you can see on the challenges, you just have to get five correct. So I got five correct. All good. Now let's move on. Now when we talk about these ones here, I'll do the usual approach of talking through all of it. We'll start with the 3-0, then the 0-3, then we'll do the ones in between. And crucially for this, I will absolutely go and look at some of the first round matchups people have to factor in what we're going to do here. So if we look at all these teams, when it comes to the 3-0 teams, remember they have to actually be teams that are going to go 3-0. So who do I have as the most likely to do that? Well, that's actually what's very interesting. Because first of all, if you know FaZe's core, they are classic for nearly always blowing a game in a group stage or a Swiss anyway. So it's hard to pick them. But in terms of floor, they're one of the teams that are most likely to make it like mid to the final of the semis. They are a very good team. Whereas Vitalik was the number one team a few months ago. 
go. Maybe Zero even is the best player in Counter Strike. But could you really pick them to go 3 0? They could do it, but I, I'd see a world where there's a bunch of teams could get to them. Then you look who they're playing the first round. FaZe plays Heroic. There's a very real chance that actually Heroic gets an upset in a BO1. They've got the players to do it. They've even got the calling potentially to do it. Then you go and you look at um, Vitality themselves are playing against. Um, Eternal Fire, by the way, that's not the team you want to play in a BO1 right now. That's a pretty scary game. So to pick either of these teams is kind of tough. So you know what? This is where I don't really have an easy option because my obvious one I should pick to go 3-0, just because when they're good, they are very good, is Team Spirit, of course, right? Yeah, they haven't had that much sample size, but they looked amazing. The problem is this, guys. Team Spirit's opening against Cloud9. That's a, that's a game they can lose in a BO1, of course. So the wild thing is, I have a really hard time picking this 3-0. I think the 3-0 is one of the hardest ones on this phase to pick. Like, I actually think, logically, because uh, I can't trust VP to do it. Na'Vi's actually, Na'Vi could do it. Na'Vi's opener is against Mongols. So that's quite plausible. If I go and look on the, um, the up-down thing, I have Na'Vi potentially playing. The problem is, I have Na'Vi if they play next round losing to Spirit, assuming they play each other. So I think they would lose that one. Then I'd have Na'Vi beating maybe a Cloud9, then beat maybe Heroic and come through 3-1. So I'm, I'm not going to say Na'Vi either. I don't think that's plausible. I'm actually going to say, you know what, I'm going to pick FaZe and Team Spirit. I don't know that, look, it's hard to do it, but I just think this is one of the rare times where there's no one really is an obvious 3-0. So those are the ones I just feel like the reasons as to why are the best. Because FaZe plays Heroic, let's say they get past that, then I have them plenty playing G2. They have lost to G2 a lot, but that was also more with the GKS lineup. I think they can win that. And then in the winner, I'd have them against potentially Mouse. So there's a 3-0. It's pretty hard. Those are hard teams. Heroic in a G2 and a Mouse. Those are all top 10 teams in the world, potentially. So... I don't know, but even so, I think they can do it. Then for Spirit, I have them potentially beating Cloud9 into a win over Na'Vi in a win over Vitality. So this is fucking hard, but again, uh, probably this is a really stacked second phase of a major for Swiss, so I actually think it's a really tough one for the Zero. I'm going to say phase and Team Spirit on those ones. I'm very confident about those teams in any way going deep in the tournament, so I'll say they're my best teams. Then when I come to Zero three, 3 this is tricky too, because there's not that many teams that are bad here. Like, let's be real. When you go down, so Furia... They've been sus at times. It's mainly the in-game leading that scares me on that one. Kiss Rattles in prison. They could be plausibly 0-3. Imperial looked way better than expected. Some of the fragging was way better. And some of the colony looked decent. Kind of shocking. Mongols was what I expected. Good, but had the odd slip up. Pain. I know they did well there. And everyone's loving Big Azira. I think this is the obvious phase where they fall apart. There's what I'm really seriously considering. Them and Fury, I'm already considering. The Kiss Rattle thing scares me, though, because I, he can easily win you a BO1. Ecstatic. I still just don't believe in them. They're not bad, and they've done well so far, but I expect them to fall sooner or later. You've got to consider maybe complexity can go 0-3. I don't think that's impossible. I think Elise is amazing, but I've also seen them lose plenty of games where Elise was amazing. But I'm thinking between these teams. So you know what? I'm going to go, first of all, immediately, I'm going to say pain. I'm just going to say I feel like they're an obvious one to pick. I think the moment we'll get to them, I think it's just harder. So there we go. I'm going to pick pain as my first one. And then here's the thing. I do hate to, I hate to hate on youth, but inexperience is a big deal. Like, Furia does have Kei Serato. Imperial has some players that have done stuff. Mongols actually a solid team. I feel like my last one actually is for real, between Call and Ecstatic, and Call has a leash. I'm actually going to say, even if people are going to think I'm a hater, I'm going to take Ecstatic. I think this is the obvious point where the nerves get to them, and they just, they just don't do it. Then for the 3-2, we've got six teams to pick here. So the good news is I can put some of them in there and feel fairly confident. Like, I do think for Vitality to not make it, there has been an enormous problem in their team, if so. Then I think this is where it's going to get spicy, because, spoiler, I'm actually going to follow up on one of my hot takes, and there's going to be a team I'm not going to pick that's a big name to go through. So if I look at the rest of the squads, I'm looking, and immediately I'm thinking of teams like... Um, I actually think that you have to immediately consider Na'Vi. I think Na'Vi's a very solid team to make it out. I think VP has the style and the strength. Obviously, they're a bit weird. The map pool scares me a little bit. I actually think I'm probably going to leave G2 out. I'm not certain yet. We'll look at who they're playing, etc. But this is one of the teams for my hot take that I'm thinking of leaving out. Mouse, I'm actually feeling like can make it, but I don't think he'll do much in the playoffs. Cloud9, I'm thinking can make it. I think Heroic can potentially make it. I'm not so sure about the others. So I think what we'll do is we'll look at some of the matchups. Right, Na'Vi's opener is against the Mongols. That's a very good chance to get a 1-0. Then I would have them potentially playing a Spirit. Look, that's not impossible to be a 1, but I'd probably take Team Spirits. Then if they lose that, I have them potentially playing Cloud9 in another be a 1. Very winnable, but also losable. It's also a world where they could be in the 1-2 game, but they could be 2-1 at that point. Then I would have them, if they go 2-1 playing Heroics, I think they would get through. So I'll say I'm going to take Na'Vi as well. I actually think a Wonderful is going to be a pop-off player. I think this is actually the time for Alexi to get a top 8 at a major with this squad. Loving all that. 
Then when I go down, see if the current team's here, as mad as it sounds, I know that their peak can sometimes look a bit sus, but I'm actually, I'm kind of feeling cloud nine. I actually just feel like, the, the in general, the team player seems nice, the CT sides are nice. I think everyone's going to be a bit more nervous on T side. And quite frankly, they don't have the AWPA, but I also think that there's so many scoffed squads. That hasn't been enough to stop them being good. It's stopped them winning the big game that they need to get the top placings, but they're a solid enough team. I think they will do well enough. I think it'll probably be a three and one type team. Like I actually have them, I would expect them no, no, I actually guess I have them as a 3-2 team because I actually have them potentially losing to like a Na'Vi, then beating like Furia, then beating G2 at the end. They might be the team that denies G2 essentially on my bracket. So I'm going to have Cloud9 make it there. I actually do think surprisingly they're better than people think. People just criticize them because of the AWP angle and the fact there's so many Russian AWPers so it feels obvious to say to get them. Then I've got three spots left. Look, G2 has Modesty and Nico. There's absolutely a world where they can alone can get you the wins to get through. If Hunter actually starts being good like he used to in CSGO, there's also a play. That team already should make it, but quite frankly, even with JKS, they sometimes were messing up majors. So I'm kind of feeling G2 to be the drop-off for this one, especially if Nico doesn't play well. And Monacy hasn't had that many majors where he's got the big experience and gone deep. So I'm kind of feeling like G2 might be the one to get fucked. Like I said, I'm feeling mouse and heroic, I've got to say. And then VP, I think those are probably the three I'm going to gamble on. Like of the three in order, I actually think I will take mouse next. What I'm going to say about Mouse is this. If you go and look, Shu here does look like he's doing a good job calling. But crucially, all four of his players frag out. Especially for their role. In fact, for his role, Mega frags out. People like Zersha for their role, Mega frag out. And then Torji, look, yes, he's had his issues in big matches on land. This is just a group stage. We're in the tournament area. And then in terms of Brolan... Brolan does look like a fitting replacement for Frozen. He's really good now. So I actually think the firepower of this team and the calling out, everything, I think everything's all together for this team to make top eight, even over a G2 of this world. And then I've got two spots left. I am actually feeling VP to make it. I have a hard time betting against VP. I do think they're a tough team for a lot of people to play. And I think even though they can let themselves on their map pool and sometimes some of their players just have the odd off game of the stars of fame and flit, the overall team strength, Norbit is way better in CS2. I actually think the major format means they'll be the ones spoiling other people and ruining them. Like, for example, in the opener, they play against Imperial, so I have them winning that one. I think it's an easy be a one. Then in the winner's match, I have them potentially playing against Vitality, so I've said they're going to lose that one. Then I have them playing against Eternal Fire, so I think they win that one, although it's a little bit dangerous. Then in the best of threes, I have them playing Mouse. I actually think in a best of three, they could beat Mouse, and then I think Mouse will beat Eternal Fire to get out. So I have them getting out 3-1. I think VP can make it actually i do think this is a solid enough team i also think they have a, a lower flaw though than mouse so they can fuck it up but i think they're going to make it i think it's actually a pretty canny team i'm looking forward to see that team play in the playoffs by the way if they do and then the last one is i am indeed going to pick heroic over g2 and the logic goes i actually do think kicksand's calling's pretty legit i see why people are putting him to be another shuhi type character i think nerds is a monster and what he's done without snipe he really impresses me he hasn't really done it that much at the majors yet he was missing it a bit on ends but i tell you what now's a chance to get it done i do think actually that shush and her and tesses were always quality players tesses only falls apart in big game like playoff matches this is a swiss system and shush is just a sleeper he's just a mad underrated player he really is like the inheritor of zipniks in many ways for danish counter strike so i'm loving them to be the sixth team i'm actually cool with the fact that like i love elise but call isn't good enough i can't gamble on them to make it g2 yeah they absolutely could but i could see a world where they bomb and they actually they start to regret the next pickup eternal fire has been pretty good so far but i look in the simulator who are they gonna actually beat and win who are they gonna have been in like in a, a best of three for example who can they even play and face in that scenario the mongols i just don't think they're quite good enough fury i actually think will drop off and imperial's just an all right team i think what you'll see is their individual form won't be as good at this point in time and they'll probably just be like a one to three team or if at best a two two team i don't think they're going through to the playoffs so yeah i actually think this one's a pretty legit one i'm actually liking this one i'm thinking my chances here look it's hard on the three zero i can't guarantee i get those it's really hard on the six static one but i think actually pain i'm actually pretty confident i've got one there uh navi cloud nine mouse and a rock i can get four this so i've got my five and then if i just have one out of vp and vitality make it i'm gonna have six or seven if i get both so i think i've got a pretty good chance to get right up there all in all yeah hear me now because the thing is i wouldn't be able to get all the work i do without my brethren the man dem in the Skrilluminati, my Patreon community. Because this video, like all of them on my channel, is kindly supported by Frisky, Matt Pugnaccio Racula, Ahmed Haju, Jensen Gore, Tobias Berners-Gorney, Animosity, 
Toucan, Tosh, and you know it. A special thanks always goes out to Jerky's Minion, who always has my back. Would you like to ask a question in my regular AMAs? Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest I could take in my work? Do you want teasers? Find out who the upcoming guests are going to be. Maybe you want to be part of those lengthy esports discussions I do with my top donators. Well, if so, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today, where? Via the Patreon link in the description box below.